Okay, it's nine o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum. If you guys would please stand for the pledge. We do have one set of minutes we need to approve. Can I have a motion to approve them? Yes, motion by Mr. Susan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tobia. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. We will move to the attorney, Mr. Thalwitzer. Thank you, Thalwitzer. <laughs> Sir. Uh, I, th I think the next item is selection of chair and vice chair. Um, the chair has to be a member of the county commission. So accordingly, it's always been my opinion that the vice chair also has to be a member since they're essentially an alternate. So that uh, limits it down to the two chairs. It's just a matter of who's chair and who's vice. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Since Commissioner Smith isn't here, I believe I'd like to nominate, nominate Commissioner Smith. He's late, correct? <laughs> I don't think he's on the board yet. Oh, I not. think it's you. It's you. Damn. Would it was you a good like try. to chair? It was a good try, Madam Chair. Would you Would you like to do one? I I will be more. If I'm the only option, I will be more than willing to do it, Madam Chair. Okay, I would love that. Yes, ma'am. This is for the next season. Oh, this so is for the next do. season. I will not be on the board. It will be you and Commissioner Smith. Okay. I've never heard such good news. So he's let's go with Commissioner Smith on the, this one I for will being second. late. He's going to be really mad at us. Absolutely. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, the next item is F. F1 is board report from myself, uh, VAB Council. Um, I don't really have a board report um, aside from the specific new business entries, so I'll pass it along to Commissioner Pritchett. No report, sir. Commissioner Tobia. It's been a pleasure being on this board. I'm sorry to hear I'm not on it next time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Susan. No report. Mr. Geiger. No report. And we are going to move into public comments. We have two gentlemen. Mr. Alex Greenweed. Good morning. Am I, re am I allowed to remove this? I can talk a little better, thank you. Good morning and uh, greetings. I really appreciate uh, Cheryl, uh, who had told me that there was a possibility that I could come before the board in reference to um, a property that's been reevaluated and the value that was given to it. Uh, it just seems like it doesn't make any sense from the two years, the valuation that it was, and in one year it went up to $78,000. Um, I did some more homework on it, and it come to find out that I think I understand why the discrepancy was created. I know I've only got three minutes. There's a lot more information I need to share, but I'll get right down to the point. I'm a licensed uh, builder for the state of Florida. I'm also a licensed realtor. Uh, I've been elected, uh, re-elected twice as a county uh, for the city of Cocoa, uh, one of the, um, also as a deputy mayor. Um, so the information I have is long-term for a six-street area in the Cocoa area. When I came before the uh, commission to identify this particular area as um, a redevelopment area, it was blighted. It still is. It's taken a while for it to catch up. But that's not the point. I'll get to the exact point. Um, I have realized that there was property next to mine, uh, apartment building, that was sold recently. And I noticed that on the valuation that's printed when you put the account number on it, um, the building next to me has a value of it being sold at one million three. The problem is, is that property was sold with the requirement of not only buying that one, but another piece of property three streets over. So that means that when the uh, property was put on the market, I was thinking about buying it. They're wanting 600 and some change for one and 600 and some change for the other. So combined, it came out to a million three. However, 
each one of these two different account number properties are valued as what they sold combined. So in other words, it shows this property that should have been 600 and something for a million three, and it does the same thing for the other one. The problem is, is that I've seen this happen because throughout the downtown area in several other properties. And because I created the commercial property group in the village, I've had a lot of other people tell me that their values have increased in jumps. And it turns out that there is another piece of property, I have that information here and the accounting, I can provide it later, where the same thing happened. Uh, this man, who's a personal friend of mine, uh, bought two different buildings, two different locations in the downtown area. He paid 950000 for both buildings, but each account number shows 950000 for each which is not the way it's supposed to be calculated. That's not how it was bought. I also have another piece of property where the same thing was, um, the calculation was done the same way. And um, in addition to that, I did find um, another piece of property that was done correctly. Uh, and this one, for example, I have the count numbers here, but to save time, uh, this piece of property was sold for a million two and the two lots are, c are connected to each other. So the value is put correctly, even though it's split between the two properties that are side by side. The property was bought for a million two. They have 630, uh, 615,000 on one lot and the one right next door, the same amount. So they're basically paying what they really bought it for, which was for a million two. So back to my property. The uh, comparables that are being used are incorrect, um, and I think that's the reason why I had such a jump of $78,000 in one year. Uh, when I bought this property, it's a prime example of affordable housing, and I've got people that are renting from me that are uh, veterans, the majority are, honorably discharged vets, retirees, students, restaurant people, police people, fire people. These are all people that are on a budget. And the only thing I can say is don't punish someone where I was able to buy a piece of property when nobody wanted it. It was drug infested. And that was the incentive for me to invest more money in it where I could provide the housing that I'm providing now. By increasing the taxes substantially like that, it's going to cause rents to go up and it's going to cause a problem with people not being able to pay the rents. So for the 24 or so years that I've owned this property, I have paid every year small increment increases, which is correct. Things go up. I understand that, especially things like for the school board, issues like that. But not 78000 in one year. And that's where the issue is. I have had one other property that I must admit, I went to the value adjustment board with Mr. Boyle, and I had talked to them over the phone, uh, basically. I didn't have to go much further than that. And basically, uh, there was a single family house, residential house, that got bumped almost eight grand or almost $10,000 more in one year. But the problem was they were using a, item that, a property that was sold in a different area near the river, and there's a complete difference there. So it was corrected. And I think that that's almost what's happening here. It's the way the values were calculated. The property next to mine was not sold for one million three. It was sold for 615, and that included another piece of property five streets away, and also that shows it as being bought for a million three. Thank you. So I'd just like to have it readdressed. Thank I'd you, love sir. to talk Mr. to anybody. Mr. Thowett, sir, what would be this man's um, remedy to move forward? Sure. Uh, he has the right to file a, essentially an appeal of the, the Value Adjustment Board's decision with the Circuit Court, uh, but the Board can't take any action based on public comment today. This meeting wasn't noticed as a hearing for any particular petition. So well, while you may have merit, I don't know uh, your arguments, but uh, your remedy is with the Circuit Court. Circuit Court. Okay, Thank so you, that sir. means I'd be having to sue the Brevard County Adjustment Board? 
No, not the VAB. The, uh, the I think the property appraiser would be the proper party, but that's between you and your attorney. Wow, I didn't realize it would go this far. All right, thank, thank you, you very sir. much. Mr. William Saltzwood, Saltzwiddle. Good morning, board. Uh, this is regarding uh, Can we just state your name real quick? Uh, my name is William Sauls Waddell, spelled S-A-L-Z-W-E-D-E-L. -E -E and uh, this is regarding uh, petition number 2020-00024. Uh, I'm appearing on behalf of myself as well as uh, the other people on this petition, uh, Sonia Febri and Marjorie Sauls Waddell. Uh, while we disagree with the magistrate's opinion that uh, my mother uh, is not naturally dependent upon my sister Sonia Febri and I uh, enough to uh, have the homestead uh, established on that basis. The case law is minimal, uh, but um, uh, there's no indication, there's no law that uh, uh, the lack of uh, Marjorie being claimed as a natural dependent on our tax returns doesn't make her uh, uh, naturally dependent according to the law here regarding homestead. But the main reason why I'm appearing today is just to, to clarify some things. Um, uh, for one thing, uh, just for the record, well, the main thing is I is, uh, wanted to make clear that um, on page three of the magistrate's opinion at the very last line, uh, is referring to my sister, now she's uh, uh, and with classes, she's doing online teaching, uh, okay, and uh, so she's not available today. She has a full full load, but uh, in the last line of page three, it says she lives with friends, and this year in May, she bought a home in Nassau, New York, uh, and so that was that was discussed at the uh, at the um, at the uh, the hearing with the magistrate, um, and so uh, up up to then. Uh, she did not have any homestead exemption in any, any other state, but uh, last year she did decide to uh, to change her homestead to New York State, and so I wanted you to know that, and she wants to, you to know that, uh, and so um, uh, so the t uh, top of page four, second line says Ms. Fabry has not had a homestead exemption in any other state. That's true. Uh, through through much of 2020, but at some point last year, she changed the homestead. Okay, so I wanted, you know, I just wanted to be transparent up front. So I, I, I don't know if that affects the legalities of this case. I don't believe so, because as of uh, January 1st of 2020, uh, her homestead was there as um, uh, Magistrate uh, uh, um, Rinky Parwini, Parwani uh, did uh, show in the, uh, in the opinion, so uh, just leave it up to you if that makes a difference. I don't think so, but uh, I don't practice law in Florida. Uh, besides that, I also wanted to clarify that she, of course, the testimony is all recorded, but um, just just for the sake of the record, if this is being recorded or just for your edification, uh, she did make a mistake as to my travel last year. Um, I uh, uh, was was in in uh, in the residence. Uh, in January 2020, I did return to California in February. Then I returned to Florida in March, and I had, and then I was there all from March to August, and uh, and then went back for a couple of weeks to California, and then uh, came back and uh, uh, was there um, uh, from latter August to to the time of this uh, of this hearing. So that's in contradiction to what she said here, and that was. Uh, of course, I declare under penalty perjury that what I'm saying is all correct under Florida law. That um, it says uh, Mr. Salswell was in Florida January 1st, 2020. This is what the opinion says. And in February, he returned to California for his law practice there. He then returned to March, Florida in March. He has been back since August. Well, I was there. I was here um, in at the subject property between March and the beginning of August, and then. Uh, and then, from, then in the subject property from the latter part of August to, to the time of this hearing uh, in October with, with uh, Magistrate Rinky Parwani. So uh, that's all I have to say. If you have any, does anybody have any questions? I'll be happy to answer on this case. No? Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Thawitzer, what would be his next step 
as well, sir. If he disagrees with the decision, uh, then like the previous commenter, it would be to file a, uh, an appeal in the circuit court. Oh, yes, yeah, we understand that. Yeah, we do, you know, his decision was partly in our favor, but uh, as to the, the issue of the natural dependency of my, of my mother, Marjorie, who's here, uh, we disagree with the, you know, we object to the opinion as to that. Thank you, sir. We're gonna move into new business. Item H1 is Mr. Jason Author here. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> right. Oh, hi, how are you? Good. Well, Madam Chair, members of the board, good morning. My name is Jason Arthur. I'm the uh, Chief Deputy at the Clerk of Court's Office under Clerk uh, Rachel Sadoff. Ms. Sadoff was unfortunately not able to be here today. She has a prior commitment uh, with the new Clerk Academy. Um, but she wanted, a, as, the, as the new administration, as you know, started in January, uh, wanted to come and introduce ourselves. Um, my staff here uh, is here with the Clerk to the board behind me, Kim Powell. To my right, Ms. Uh, Nicole Summers, and to my back right here is uh, Cheryl Duesberg with the uh, clerk to the board. Uh, wanted to see if the board has any questions, comments, concerns, anything that the clerk's office can help uh, help the board with to their capacity, and uh, just wanted to basically reach out and introduce ourselves and let you know we're here if, uh, if you all need anything from us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, item H2, Mr. Thawitzer, I'm gonna turn this over to you, sir. Thank you, and I don't know if uh, Mr. Stephen Boyle has arrived yet. I thought that might be him. Um, so what we have here, typically what happens uh, before we get to the final meeting is uh, the special magistrates will prepare recommendations to the board for each petition uh, that comes before the board. Uh, I review those. Uh, recommendations, sometimes uh, I make suggestions, sometimes they're, uh, I, I approve them as is, subject to the board's final approval. Um, sometimes there are disagreements between myself and the special magistrates, and that's what we have here. Uh, Mr. Boyle uh, is one of our value special magistrates, and for the petitions identified in uh, H2, um, I made some recommendations to Mr. Boyle to make some revisions. Uh, he disagreed with those. Uh, specifically, uh, the uh, my disagreement was how he, and I'm sure he'll frame his own uh, argument the way that he sees fit, but essentially he applied cost of sale deductions at a consistent rate of 15% on each recommendation based upon the uh, mass appraisal rate set by the property appraiser's office uh, each year, and that's based on a form that's filed each year with the Department of Revenue. Um, it's a complicated issue. It's one that has had a lot of discussion and controversy over a fairly long per period of time, but it's my opinion that it's inappropriate to make across the board 15% cost of sale adjustments based solely on the mass appraisal adjustments. Uh, other attorneys disagree. Other special magistrates disagree. Um, I'm not certain of whether there's consensus among the property appraisers in the state, the, the elected appraisers, uh, but I would welcome any comment from our uh, property appraiser's office. But essentially my position is that there has to be evidence in the record for each petition supporting a cost of sale adjustment. It could be 15%, it could be less, it could be more, but that there has to be actual specific evidence for each petition uh, that, that uh, an adjustment is made. Now what the law requires is that the board uh, and the property appraiser, for that matter, consider the cost of sale. Consider does not mean apply, it doesn't mean to uh, mandatorily make uh, an adjustment, upward or downward, it simply means that they have to consider it. There's evidence in the record for these petitions that the property appraiser's office did consider that um, but elected not to uh, apply those adjustments with respect to the specific petitions and the specific appraisals uh, for the petitions identified in, in H2. Uh, I could expound on that. I'll, I'll spare the board the um, minutia. There's a lot of, um, there are a lot of details and it is, at least in my opinion, a, a very complicated issue once you get down to, to the, uh, 
you know, the trees through the forest, so to speak. So I would welcome Mr. Boyles at the board's pleasure at Mr. Boyles' um, position on that. And we've already discussed this, so. Good morning. Yeah. Is it okay if I take my mask off? Why? I've had both of my COVID shots for over a month. Anyway, thank Mr. you. Mr. Boyle, can you state for your that. name and your title, sir? My name's Stephen Boyle, and I'm a real estate appraiser. I have a state cert I'm a state certified real estate appraiser for the state of Florida, and have been since they instituted uh, certification back in the 80s. And I also hold the MAI designation from the Appraisal Institute, which for people that aren't familiar with it, it's like the doctorate in the appraisal business. We have a, a philosophical difference in the way we view market value and just value. If the Florida legislature years ago, after a court case that determined that market value and just value were synonymous, introduced the eighth criteria into statute 193.011. And they did it for a very specific reason, and that was to make clear that there is a difference between market value and just value. And I'm quite sure you've all have been through your training manuals uh, that the DOR provides, and it's all discussed in module six. Market value is typically the the price that a property will bring in an open and fair market transaction. Just value recognizes the fact that when you sell a property, and let's say you have a house and you sell your house for $200,000 and the contract comes in at 200 and everybody agrees to it, when you go to the closing, you're gonna end up with less than $200,000 because there's normal and customary disposition cost involved with the sale of any property. And even if you sold the property for sale by owner and did it all yourself and had no attorney's fees and no realtor fees or anything, you still would have to pay the dock stamps on the deed to the state of Florida. It's a normal and customary disposition cost for any properties in Florida. So as a result, just value which is market value after these deductions is different than market value. When you get to a hearing, an administrative review, and you're the special magistrate, you receive all the information. And when you get done receiving the information, you look at the way that market value has been established. Because anytime you're in these hearings, the first thing you need to establish is market value. And then after that, you take into consideration what we're discussing, which is the first and eighth criteria. The eighth criterion basically says, let me just flip to it so I get it right. <clears throat> The net proceeds of the sale of a property as received by the seller after deducting all of the usual and reasonable fees and cost of sales, including the cost and expenses of financing and allowing for unconventional or atypical terms. Now, the reason why this was put in was they wanted to make sure after that court case that there was a distinct difference between market value and just value. And in a hearing, in administrative review, we're getting down to just value. And Mr. Thorowitz was correct when he said, they say that you only have to consider. But what the language, in my opinion, means is it says there's eight criteria, which you all are probably familiar with, and not all of them are applicable to every situation. In other words, if you have a special purpose property like a church, okay, you're typically not gonna do a sales comparison approach. You would do a cost approach. So therefore you don't, you can consider, but you don't have to do that sales comparison approach. 
it's not the intent of the legislature for you to just say, well, okay, we're going to not consider at all the fact that there's normal and customary disposition cost associated with the sale of the property. And again, in an administrative review, as a special magistrate, you're required to act as is the property assessor and consider the fact that this property sold as of January 1, even though it didn't sell. You have to consider the fact that it sold as of January 1. Well, what happens when they're coming in and when the property assessor is coming in to defend their position of market value, they may present three sales. And their sales were presented, and you have to make sure that they're presented based on the recorded sale price, not the recorded sale price after some deductions for the normal and customary disposition cost. And in all of the cases that were rejected that I found, after doing the analysis, I realized that the estimate of market value by the property assessor did not take into consideration the first or eighth criteria. They didn't make any deductions at all from their estimate of market value based on the evidence they presented. Whether they did it with a cost approach or whether they did it with an income approach or whether they did it through a sales comparison approach, you have to make sure that they haven't already made that deduction. So in, in all of my findings, I pointed out that they had not made this deduction and if there was evidence presented in the hearing that there should be, whether it was a DR-493 form, which every property assessor files with the state, or whether they presented some other evidence, I would make the deduction. If there was no evidence presented, you know, if, the, if they just merely said, well, I think it should be uh, assessed for less than market value, I wouldn't make the deduction. But if there was evidence presented, I would make the deduction. Also, when you're dealing with most of the people in the public that own real estate, they know that when they go to that closing for that house they sold for $200,000, they're gonna get less because there are the normal and customary disposition costs. There's the commissions and the uh, title insurance and the documentary stamps. And so I don't think that it's unreasonable when somebody says, you know, here's the DR-493, the property assessor according to them, applied a 15% cost of sale in the inputs that they put into the mass appraisal system, that that isn't good enough evidence to say, yes, you could, should also use that. Plus, inside of the training manual, it specifically says that you, that's what you're supposed to do. And I'm not gonna bore you by reading the training manual. As I said, I'm quite sure you've all been through it. That, that when you go into the hearing, and the evidence is presented, and it clearly shows that they have not considered the first rate criteria, you make the deduction, and based on the bulletin that the DOR put out, and based on the training manual that the DR put out, they suggest that you use what was on the DR-493 form, which in these cases is what I did. Questions? I, uh Got you at about four or five minutes. I'm gonna I'm allow the property appraiser to come speak and then we okay. can be here for questions afterwards. Is that good, Board? Do you have questions, Neil? Ma'am, may I just uh, Most certainly, not sir. so much responding, but I wanted to provide some context. So what I'm asking the Board to do today is essentially decide which way these petitions should go. Um, there is no other real, I don't wanna say tiebreaker because it's always the Board's ultimate decision but uh, because there is a disagreement here, which is relatively unusual, uh, the board does need to make a decision. So what would happen here if the board agrees that a cost of sale adjustment should be made, the board would simply approve the, the recommendations as written and we're done with those ones. If the board agrees that there should not be a cost of sale adjustment uh, as provided in uh, Mr. Boyle's recommendations, the board would give direction to myself to uh, direct Mr. Boyle to revise those recommendations accordingly. Uh, so I, I just wanted to make clear what the board's, uh, what we're asking the board to do today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I do have a question. Should I hold it until after the No, sir, person? if you've got one, jump right okay. in. Okay, morning, Mr. Boyle. Good morning. Um, did, did the individual petitioners make the argument to you that they are entitled to one and eight, which often is considered to be 15%, or is that something that you've you've put in on your own no. fruition. 
if they didn't make the argument, then I, I didn't do anything. Because you have to have evidence presented into the hearing to justify the fact that, that it, one, it wasn't made. In all of the petitions where I made it, there was evidence presented at the hearing that it wasn't made. And oftentimes, they would refer directly if it was comparable sales that were used. They would say, well, here are the three comparable sales. And you know they're based on the recorded sale price of the properties. And therefore, you know no adjustment had been made because you have to record it at market value. And then you work from market value down to just value. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Property appraiser's office. No worries. Um, we don't have an argue, we, a sub-argument for Mr. Boyle's disagreement with uh, the board attorney's uh, supposition on the claims that he is making. We will tell you that uh, we are very familiar with cost of sale and what 193.011 sub per in 1 and 8 requires us to do, and we do that for every appraisal. Um, so we don't have anything else to add or, or take away from Mr. Boyle's argument or the direction of the board attorney. Uh, may I ask another question, please? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, one and eight, are, are, there's no argument that those should be applied. Do you have a suggestion of, of what the, the quantity of those adjustments might be or, or, or what you may use percentage-wise? Yes, and we do supply that to the Florida Department of Revenue yearly, you know, per stratum on property, and it's about 15%. And without getting into property appraisal 101 up here, which is why you hire magistrates, um, we don't receive a closing statement for every piece of property that transacts. We make those adjustments in the market rates that we, we derive out of the transactions that are recorded um, in the clerk of the court's office. So where a cost of sale for one property might be uh, you know, 15%, it may be 17% on, on a, an identical property. We're not going to get that level of detail. Right. So we're making those adjustments in the mass appraisal process and the formation of our rates when we apply those. Thank you. There, there's really no other way for us to do that. I understand. So ma'am, just to clarify, you already have that 15% in this um, formula? Correct. Okay. In, in all approaches that we that we consider or use for determination of value. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Can I make a clarification on that point or ask a question? It's at the board's pleasure. Um, certainly. When you have to come up to the mic, sir. When the property assessor applies the 15% adjustment, it's when it goes into their algorithms for the mass appraisal system. When they come to the hearing and present the comparable sales or the cost approach or the income approach to defend their estimate of just value, in none of the hearings here did they demonstrate that for their estimate of market value to get down to just value that there was any type of deduction made. They do it in the mass appraisal system, but in the evidence that they present at the hearing, they don't do it. And again, that evidence, if it's based on a sales comparison approach, was based on the recorded sale prices, so there was no deduction made. And that's why, following the DOR's instructions, it was made during the administrative review. Thank you, sir. Mr. Um, Thalwitzer, let me ask you this. If, if we rule in favor of the property appraiser does Mr. Boyle have another um, remedy to do after this? Or is this just? Not really, because M M Mr. Boyle serves the board. OK. So this is the yeah. board's okay. position. I'm I sorry, hold on a second. So, so we're, just, we're just hearing the evidence and, and try to make a decision. You guys, are, if you would chime in, but I'm, I'm going to um, just make the comment that I think the property appraiser's been doing this a long time, and they run the numbers. I mean, I, I get the accounting side of it. So, um, sir, I, I hear you in this, but I, I probably have a little bit more um, comfort with the um, professionalism of what the property appraiser's office is doing with this. Because I know sometimes some numbers already include certain things. I, I do this myself and things I do in life. But if you guys want to jump in or make a motion. 
I can suggest a motion if the board. Ma Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, so to make a motion to not accept or better yet reject the recommendations of, of Stephen Boyle for the petitions as listed in new business. Okay. That would be suitable. Okay, I have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Passes three to one with um, Mr. Geiger in yep. objection. And for clarification. Yes, sir. I will, um, unless the board disagrees, work with Mr. Boyle to uh, prepare revised recommendations for these petitions and we'll have those ready by the next meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, I sir. Thank you. Mr. Thawitzer, if you want to go ahead and start item H3. Yes, uh, these are the petitions for which payment was not timely made, so the board is required to deny these. Uh, each of the ones listed on H3, so the motion would be to deny each of those petitions. Yes, sir, thank you. Do we have a motion? I'll move to deny those petitions. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Geiger. Do second. I have second by Mr. Susan? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 1. Item H4 and 5, um, we need to table those. Can I have a motion to table? Motion by Commissioner Tobiah. Second. Second by Mr. Susan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Item H6, sir. H6 is requesting permission for the board to advertise and set compensation rates for the special magistrates for the next year, the 2021 tax cycle. Okay. And I do not know the specific rates. I believe they're around 125 an hour. Maybe the board clerk can provide specifics. Are you asking currently for the Brevard County's rates? And they've been steady for as long as I've been serving the board, six or seven years. There are 95 for value magistrates and um, 100 for attorney magistrates. Thank you. On board, do we have a comment or a motion? I'll move to um, approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Mr. Geiger. Do I have a second? Second. Yes, Commissioner Tobiah. And have we put a CPI or any, uh, uh, Mr. Thalwitzer says that there's been no change in how many years? Madam I've Chair? been here since I think 2015, no change since then. Here. Madam Chair, I mean, CPI is 1.234, but at least it would get us somewhere. And, and the, again, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear, was it a buck and a quarter or was it a hundred an hour? It's 95 for the appraiser magistrates and $100 for the attorney magistrates. Is there any change in those numbers, sir? If, if the board would like, I have, uh, my office has done some uh, research as to what other counties, surrounding counties, um, charge or, or, or allow for their, their magistrates. I'd be more than happy to hand this to the uh, members of the board if you would like to look, Madam at least sir. the surrounding, surrounding counties. Not all counties have responded with their, what they pay, but uh, I believe 40, if I'm not mistaken, of the counties have responded. Would, okay, would, sir. Would the board like to have those statistics? Yes. Is this competitive numbers we have? Are, are we hearing that we, we want to consider the dollar figure, or are we simply giving ourselves the ability to set that compensation at some future date? Mr. Tobias, are you wanting to? This would be to set it for the next cycle. So really, the amount isn't at a discussion, thank you, for right now. No, it, it, it is, sir. Okay. Mr. Um, Thalwitzer, do we have people that respond with the rates that we are setting now? Yes, and I don't think we've sent, obviously we haven't sent out solicitations this year. Okay. I can say some of the years I've been here, we've had some need for additional value magistrates in particular. Okay. I can also say I represent a Volusia's board as well. They did vote to increase the rate by $25 an hour. I think that they're at, I don't know if this reflects the increased rate. Yeah, this is, um, this, it just happened two weeks ago. So they went up to 125 an hour across the board because they were having that problem with not enough responses. 
if you guys want to jump in when you want to ask questions, I don't think I have the ability to do this here, so. I don't have an issue with it. I just was questioning whether or not this was the time to discuss the dollar figure, and apparently it is, so. It is, because we need to okay. advertise, and the rates will be part of the advertisement. Are you asking for it? Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair. I know it's, instead of having to do a 25% increase, it, you know, I'm not prepared. I, I just saw these numbers, but I would certainly have no problem tying this at least to a CPI in, increase, not to exceed 3% especially if we have not had a rate increase um, in how many years? At least six or seven years. If you were a firefighter, you get a 40% increase, I'm just saying. Depends on which firefighter. All right, what is the uh, motion from the board, please? We had a motion to approve what was already there. We didn't get a second. You came in on a seat, right? Yes, so sir. now we're pulling back that original motion to make another motion for yours. Well, if I have original. a second or an amendment I'll or anything. I have a second for discussion and then he can amend. Okay, I have a second for discussion. Commissioner Tobaya? And again, it's at, at, at CPI, we're not talking about, we're, we're talking about a buck and a quarter an hour, so it's not a big deal. I just thought this, this would get us somewhere quicker. I'll support either one. I was just throwing that out there as an idea. Okay, motion maker, did you want to make any kind of a um, change to your amendment? I, your, Motion or do you want to move forward? I don't know who made the motion. If who made the motion, ma'am? Mr. Geiger. Yeah, Mr. Geiger, are you comfortable with your motion still or do you want to make any changes? I don't recall making the motion. He made, he made an original motion for the uh, original yes, sir, $5. I know. It's good. John is it, right. Commissioner got it. Tobias has either make a motion or not. We got this. Do you want to change your motion, sir? Are you comfortable with the motion you made for the original? But again, I don't recall my motion, but I, I actually would support perhaps a $25 increase across the board. So I, I'll withdraw my motion okay. if I did, in fact, make one. Okay. I'm not sure Commissioner Tobias will support a 25. I think he was ready to support a CPI change. Commissioner Tobias? Uh, yes, yes, Madam Chair. I, I haven't had time to digest these numbers. I just got them here. Certainly would do a CPI, and it sounds like probably more is due, but uh, seeing as there hasn't been an adjustment in a number of years, but I haven't had the time to do that basic. Do you want to give analysis. us a hint where you would settle? It might make a difference on whether it passes or not, sir. Well, I'm certainly willing to support CPI as we move forward, but I would have to, you know, uh, Madam Chair, again, I just got this, but it looks like Osceola is a buck and a quarter, uh, Seminoles 130. Uh, I'm just looking at our surrounding ones, Indian Rivers, uh, a, a buck and a buck, a buck five. So um, I think those are the ones, right? Uh, orange, I'm sorry, I forgot orange. Uh, orange is 100. So and 125. Madam Chair, may I make a suggestion or a, a recommendation or an option? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe we're going to have another hearing set for April 23rd. Okay. Uh, whether or not you want to table this issue as to uh, whether to increase the magistrate's rate of pay until the 23rd to give all um, members of the board time to digest these numbers and decide at that time. Can. Can some can uh, staff bring back a recommendation what CPI would look like? Does that make sense? That's what you're wanting, right, John? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah, this. I'm, I'm just looking at the 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 VAB uh, hours. We're talking 145 hours, so you know the $25 really isn't all that. If it gets us competitive, we're, we're talking a couple thousand bucks. Yes. So especially if it hasn't been adjusted. So. Um, I, I may be open to that. In fact, I probably will be, but I would, I, I would certainly, because it may be more if we haven't touched right, it. Right. Uh, I, I, I think that's a good suggestion to wait till the next meeting. Okay, so Mr. Geiger, I'm gonna give you the ability here to decide what we're doing and we'll see if we have a second on that, sir. Oh, okay, well, no, I, I'm, I'm fine with waiting until the following meeting, just other than making the point that you know, I'm a real estate appraiser and I'm turning down five, eight jobs a day Okay. Uh, I'm not attracted by this fee. I have been a special master in the past, and I think if we're going to attract quality special masters, or, or, or attract any for that matter, and pull them away from their private practices, 
we might need to, to consider bumping it up. So. Thank you. Mr. Susan, would your second hold on that motion being changed? Yeah, sir? He, so he needs to make the motion to withdraw his original motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to withdraw there my original motion. Okay. Yes, sir. So you're making a motion to table? There it is. Yes. Motion to table. Time certain. Okay. Next meeting. Do I have a second for a motion to table to the next meeting? Yes. Time certain. Next meeting. Motion by Mr. Susan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Item H7. That is to approve to appoint legal counsel for, for the upcoming 2021 tax year, and that would be myself um, under the same contract terms that we've had for several years now. Thank you, sir. Commission uh, members, I, I think we've had time to read this. Do we have any recommendations? I'm quite satisfactory, if not very pleased, with with uh, his service to the board. Okay. Is and, that a motion? Uh, that is a motion to retain Mr. Thalwitzer. Okay, Second. Mo motion to retain Mr. Thalwitzer. Second by Mr. Susan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Sir, I believe we're finished. Did you want to? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And I will call this meeting adjourned. Necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.